so uh, this is heredity and intelligence as factors to crime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we say heredity, ito yung uh, mga naman ah. Okay, the heredity factors. The common household expressions like it is in the blood and like father, like son are usually heard and said whenever there are several members of the family who are criminals. <laughs> na ipasa sa iyo na mana mo yung pagiging criminal uh, the old biblical injunction that the sins of the fathers shall be visited on the sons criminologists over the years sought to find evidence to support that nature rather than nurture is more influential in developing criminal tendencies big sabihin pag nature it became natural to you naging natural sa iyo yung pagiging criminal kasi nga pagkapanganak sa iyo tanggap o na ano to na taglay mo na yung katangian na yon yung pagiging kriminal in considering biological theories determinism refers to the view that an individual's criminal lifestyle or actions is the direct result of genetic inheritance or biological predisposition um, determinism because you it was already predetermined kung magiging anong klasing tao ka na magiging criminal ka because of your uh, biology, your physical constitution. Soft determinism, as explained by Matza, examines the role of determinism, but also acknowledges that other factors from environmental to choice may be part of the equation. This assumes that behavior is not completely and strictly determined by the individual's genetic or biological makeup. Sinasabi dyan na hindi lang ang physical na katawan mo, hindi lang yung biology mo ang nagde-determine ng behavior o ng, uh, well, yeah, behavior mo. But it also includes the factor na uh, merong environment at meron ding choice ang isang tao. So evolutionary theory is a broad-based view that certain types of criminal behavior are genetic and passed down from one generation to the next through evolutionary processes of natural selection and survival. Ito yung, kung maalala nyo yung theory of evolution, ito yun. Na, uh, well, it is not directly related doon kay Charles Darwin. Uh, rather, hindi siya ito yung... Ulit. <laughs> hindi siya yung kay Charles Darwin. Yun. But rather, this pertains to how a specific person becomes a criminal. Dahil na ipasa sa kanya, dahil nasa kanyang genes, ang um, criminal genes. Kaya naging criminal ang isang tao. Then we also have that gene-based evolutionary theory. A general approach that suggests that the process of natural selection has resulted in criminal genetic tendencies that are passed down from generation to generation. So, basically, halos parehas lang sila. Uh, evolutionary theory and gene-based evolutionary theory. Okay, pedigree studies. Pag sinabing pedigree, hindi ito yung pagkain ng aso. But this is yung lahi ninyo. Okay, yung pedigree mo, kung ano yung uh, background mo. So, these studies cover families or bloodline which may show or demonstrate the claim that criminal behavior can be passed down by generation to generation by bloodline. First, doon sa mga uh, pedigree na yan ay yung Jukes family tree. This is uh, developed by... Richard Dugdale and Arthur S. Tabrook. So, Dugdale uh, is a member of the Executive Committee of the Prison Association of New York and a colleague of Harris uh, was delegated to visit jails in upstate New York. In a jail in Ulster County, County he found six members of the same Duke family. Yung Duke, uh, hindi yan totoong pangalan. Okay, pseudonym lang siya. Siyempre, uh, para lang hindi siya ma-brand, ma hindi lang siya makilala agad yung taong to. So, though they were using four different family names, ibig sabihin, uh, nagkaroon na ng salinlahi. 
hindi na sila yung direct doon sa joke pero magkakamag-anak, magkakadugo sila. On investigation, he found that of 29 male immediate blood relations doon sa uh, pinaka simula nitong family tree na to, si Ada Juk, 17 had been arrested and 15 convicted of crimes. He studied the records of inmates of the 13, 13 county jails in New York State as well as poor houses and courts while researching the New York Hill family's ancestry in an effort to find the basis for their criminality. His book claimed Max, a frontiersman who was a descendant of early Dutch settlers and who was born between 1720 and 1740, had been the ancestor of more than 76 convicted criminals. 18 brothel keepers, 120 prostitutes, over 200 relief recipients, and two cases of feeble-mindedness. Kumbaga, uh, mula dun sa isang tao, ito yung naproduce niya na lahi. Puro delinquents. Kung hindi criminals, delinquents sila. The term feeble-minded was used from the late 19th century in Europe, the United States, and Australasia for disorders later referred to as illnesses or deficiencies of the mind. At the time, mental deficiency encompassed all degrees of educational and social deficiency. Many of the criminals could be linked to Margaret, the mother of criminals. Um, again, pseudonym lang ito ah. Margaret ang pangalan, pinangalan sa kanya. Renamed Ada. Kaya nga, Ada Margaret or Margaret Ada Jukes. Yung pangalan, ipinangalan sa kanya. Again, pseudonym lang yon. Pero that person is considered as the mother of criminals. Hindi naman sinasabi na lahat ng criminal galing talaga sa kanya. But na-trace lang talaga dun sa family tree niya na ayun nga. Ay mga madaming prostitutes. Madaming, may mga murderers, may mga brothel keepers, at kung ano-ano pa. Doug Dale created detailed genealogical charts and concluded that poverty, disease, and criminality plagued the family. He published his findings in, yung pangalan na libro, The Dukes, A Study in Crime, Pauperism, Disease, and Heredity in 1877. Doug Dale debated the relative contribution of environment and heredity and concluded that the family's poor environment was largely to blame for their behavior. Environment tends to produce habits which may become hereditary. Kung ano daw ang nagiging, um, ano to? ang nasa kapaligiran mo, yun ay nagiging habit. And that habit becomes uh, passed on. So nagiging hereditary. He noted that the jukes, We're not a single family, but a composite of 42 families, and that only 540 of his 709 subjects were apparently related by blood. Dami pa rin, di ba? 540 ang natrace niyang magkakadugo uh, mula doon kay Ada Jokes. He urged public welfare changes and improvements in the environment in order to prevent criminality, poverty, and disease. Writing, Public health and infant education are the two legs upon which the general morality of the future must travel. So Estabrook, Estabrook rather, reanalyzed Doug Dale's data and updated it to include 2,820 persons, adding 2,111 jukes to the 709 studied by Doug Dale. He claimed that the living jukes were costing the public at least two million dollars. Ganon ang gastos ng gobyerno doon sa mga uh, descendants ni Ada Duke because of yun nga, poverty, populism uh, dahil criminal sila and so on. Another family tree is the Calicac family. Kung si Ada Duke puro kriminal ang kanyang mga offspring, ang kanyang naging lahi, ito namang Kalikak family is a different story. So this is uh, by Henry Goddard who was a American who was an American psychologist and is best known for his work on the area of the inheritability of intelligence naman sa pag-iisip naman. He was influenced by Mendelian genetics and believed that feeble-mindedness was the result of a single recessive gene. It is considered by many 
to be one of the pioneers of the American eugenicist movement. Morons were Goddard's primary interest, yung mga mabababa talaga ang IQ. He originated this term, deriving it from the Greek word for foolish. Goddard defined morons as high-grade defectives. Sobrang depektibo daw ng mga tao na to, na to. Who possess low intelligence but appear normal to casual observers. Mga pagtinignan mo, normal naman. Pero syempre, pag nakausap mo na, pag nagsasalita na siya, sobrang baba na talaga ng kanyang intelligence at mapapansin mo yun. In addition to their learning difficulties, Goddard characterized morons as lacking self-control, thus making them susceptible to sexual immorality and vulnerable to other individuals who might exploit them for use in criminal activity. Okay. Although Goddard and his assistant studied more than 300 families, the Kalikak family remains the most famous. The name Kalikak is actually a pseudonym also created by Goddard and the Greek words kalos, which means beauty, and kakos, meaning bad. Kaya nga, um, sa kapag nag-aral na kayo ng question document, may ma, may term doon, kakography. This is the art of, uh, this is bad handwriting. <laughs> yeah, kakography. So the name is Fitin, the Kalikak family, was divided into two strains, one good and one bad, both of which originated from a common progen progenitor, Martin Kalikak Sr., so, etong si Martin Calicac Sr. was a young soldier. He had a liaison with an unnamed, feeble-minded tavern girl. So, um, nung sandalo siya, nagkaroon siya ng sexual relationship with a certain feeble-minded tavern girl. This thirst, this tryst, um, resulted in the birth of an illegitimate son, Martin Calicac Jr., the cacos or the bad strain of the Kalikak family descended from his from this line. Later in his life, Martin Kalikak Sr. made a Quaker woman from a good family. The Kalos line descended from this marriage. So, nagkaroon siya ng dalawang uh, kachururot. Yung una niyang kachururot, hindi sila kasal. And yun nga, feeble-minded yung babae. Then the other one is a good... Uh, came from a good family, Quaker woman niya siya. Okay. Goddard's genealogical research revealed that the union with the feeble-minded tavern girl resulted in generations of mental defectives who were plagued by illegitimacy, prostitution, alcoholism, epilepsy, and lechery. Uh, yun yung mga naging lahi niya doon sa feeble-minded girl nung sundalo pa siya. His investigation of the other Kalikak branch revealed precisely the opposite. The marriage of Martin Kalikak Sr. to the respectable Quakeress yielded generations of society's finest citizens. Goddard believed that the striking schism separating the two branches of the family was due entirely to the different genetic input from the women. He affirmed that feeble-minded people were multiplying at twice the rate of the general population, thus producing more feeble-minded children with which to clog the wheels of human progress. Mas madami daw na po-produce na offspring ang mga feeble-minded people. Again, because they lack self-control. Yun. And dahil mas madami sila, mas, mas kumbaga napupuno ang society ng mga feeble-minded uh, sabi nga, which clogs the wheels of human progress. Moreover, since feeble-minded people were not able to control themselves, they were the principal cause of many social problems, including crime and illegitimacy. Goddard was hesitant to support compulsory sterilization, suggesting instead that the best cure for society's ills would be to build colonies for the feeble-minded where the feeble-minded could be segregated. Yung mga feeble-minded daw, dapat ilagay doon sa colony na yun. Basically, ikukulong sila. Yun daw ang, ang 
Ano to? Ang sagot sa tanong. Yung daw, ang remedyo sa problem na ito. Dahil nga, mas dumadami daw ang mga feeble-minded. <clears throat> so, the height of Goddard's success came at a time when America was experiencing a large influx of immigrants from Europe. The Immigration Restriction Act passed in 1924 was influenced by American eugenics efforts. In 1913, Goddard was invited to Ellis Island to help detect morons in the immigrant population. In his intelligence classification of immigrants of different nationalities, he asserted that most of the Ellis Island immigrants were mentally deficient. Yung mga nakatira daw sa island na yun, mentally deficient. For example, he indicated that 83% of all Jews tested were feeble-minded. Sobrang dami. As were 80% of the Hungarian, 79% of the Italians, and 87% of the Russians. The result was that many immigrants were turned away and sent back to Europe. Okay, then the third and last family dito sa pedigree or genetic study is the Edwards family. So Jonathan Edwards was a famous preacher during the colonial period. When his family tree was traced, none of the descendants was found to be a criminal, unlike kay Ada Jukes and kay Kalikak, yung isang part ng Kalikak. So on the other hand, many became presidents of the United States, uh, governors, members of the Supreme Court, famous writers, preachers, and teachers. Kung baga, matitino sila, walang naging kriminal sa kanila. Respectable silang lahat. There were practically no breakers sa Edwards family. More than 100 lawyers, 30 judges, 13 college presidents, and 100 and more professors, 60 physicians, 100 clergymen, missionaries, and theological professors. 80 were elected to public office, including three mayors, three governors, several members of Congress, three senators, and one vice president. 60 have attained prominence in authorship or editorial life with 135 books of merit. Then 75 were army or navy officers. Okay. Yun ang storya ng Edwards family. Uh, pinapakita lang to na na genetics could play a role on how your family would become. Kung ano yung magiging uh, lahi mo, katulad kay Kalikak. Dahil nagkaroon siya ng anak doon sa isang feeble-minded girl, yung mga naging offspring pa ng mga anak, yung mga apo niya doon sa side na yon were uh, basically either feeble-minded din or prostitutes or mga kumbaga may problem sa problem sila sa society unlike the other side kay Edwards family and the other side of uh Kalikak family matitino sila okay 